Today marks the ninth day of record high gas prices. Those living in California, Nevada, Hawaii, Oregon, Washington, Illinois, Alaska, Michigan, Arizona, Indiana, Washington, D.C., New Jersey, Maine, and Massachusetts. We did have a map for that, but we've added a couple of states since yesterday. They now all pay $5 or more a gallon. The national average is 491. Actually, it was 491 a couple of hours ago when we wrote the script. GasBuddy.com now reports that it's 495, up a few pennies in just a few hours. That's two dollars a gallon more than when President Biden came into office. Gas goes into the price of everything, and oil actually, actual oil goes into virtually everything made these days. So take a family making 68 thousand dollars a year. That's the national average. Gas is up 48%, food up 9%, rent up 15%. That is $330 more per month every month, nearly $5,000 a year more than when Mr. Biden took office. And there is no sign it's getting better anytime soon. Bacha Unger Sargon, Deputy Opinion Editor for Newsweek, uh, is here. Bacha, I can't get over this issue that the two things of crisis we're facing gas prices slash inflation and baby formula hit the middle class and the lower middle class by far the hardest. A hundred percent. You know, the people who sit there on Twitter all day talking about how these are not real crises, these are not real issues, these are people who work from home, people who don't have to drive a couple hours to get to work, people who don't have to have baby formula for maybe more than one baby, more than one child. You know, we're talking about the class divide here. The people in charge of making policy are part of the elites. The people suffering from their bad policy are part of the working class and the middle class, and they are experiencing these bad policies in ways that the people who set the policies just never do and never will. There, and I know this pains you to say, uh, as somebody who is a progressive herself, especially when it comes uh, to economic issues, there's probably no better uh, example of that than Debbie Stabenow, Democratic senator from Michigan. Take a listen. As I do have to say just on the issue of uh, uh, gas prices after waiting for a long time uh, to have enough chips in this country to finally get my electric vehicle. I got it uh, and drove it from Michigan to here uh, this last weekend and went by every single gas station and didn't matter how high it was. And so I'm looking forward to the opportunity for us to move to vehicles that aren't going to be dependent on the um, whims of the oil companies and the uh, international markets. You know, this didn't really work out so well for the French or the Russian elite, did it? <laughs> right. We're living in the let them drive electric cars moment of, you know, 2022. It's absolutely unbelievable. These people take a question of economic privilege, right, having $65,000 and above in the bank that you can use to buy one of these electric cars, right, and then they clothe that economic privilege as morality, right? I am more moral because I am more rich. I can afford this electric car, and so I don't have to use this evil gas, right? What they're doing is they're essentially demonizing the vast majority of Americans, including the vast majority of working class Americans who can't, you can't be a trucker and have an electric car. You can't run a farm on electric cars. Let me, let me ask working you this. Working class people need gas and oil. It's interesting. And then on the issue of inflation, and I, I'm I'm thinking about going back to the beginning here about the White House needing a win or at least needing a reset. Um, here is Secretary Yellen last week talking about uh, inflation. Earlier, of course, she and the rest of the administration had said uh, it was transitory, then questioned on CNN about that issue. I think I was wrong then about um, the path that inflation um, would take, but we recognize that now. Right. She and the rest of the world recognizes that now. Um, <laughs> a caveman would recognize that right now. <laughs> As you talk to your liberal elite friends in New York, which you have many of, has there yet become a frustration <laughs> with Joe Biden, not necessarily over policies, but over politics, that he's not firing people, he's not sort of resetting in a way that gives Democrats at least something to point to come November? I mean... 
first of all, I don't have that many liberal friends left, I'll be honest. But um, I will tell you that, you know, I think one of the problems here is that the Democrats are obsessed with messaging. They're obsessed with winning, like slipping by, convincing Americans that they still represent them so they can win, instead of being obsessed with policy and the lives of everyday Americans. You know, and it's so clear the thing they're worried about is not improving the lives of these people, but getting into office again. But we're seeing right now what they do when they have that power, which is absolutely nothing, although not nothing. Yesterday, President Biden signed an emergency executive order. What was the emergency? Making sure that people can import solar panels from China without tariffs, you know, even though they're relying on Uyghur slave labor and even mm -hmm. though they're in violation of all sorts of other environmental policies, right? This is, you know, this was the emergency to make sure that we could get yeah. this, you know, these cheap goods from China. I, I could not have teased our next segment better because that's what we're talking about next. <laughs> Bacha, good to see you as always. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Polls in California. Thanks for having me. Close Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.